Today, I'll explain how to understand and work from the cable charts in Pretzel Logic. That is the new companion book to mostly classic cables. The books are sold as a pair now, and everybody who previously bought mostly classic cables, which has been out for a couple of years, will be receiving a Pretzel Logic copy for free. Both books are intended to be machine knitting cable encyclopedias, giving you techniques for working the cable, as well as full of patterns, projects to use to enjoy those cables. Open cables are what we're talking about today. These are cables that have knit stitches against a pearl background, such as these. There are some projects using cables such as these, but not the identical ones in mostly classic cables, where I refer to them as cables with traveling stitches. That is an accurate description. Hand knitting terms do vary for cables such as this because of the long worldwide history of knitting, but they are very frequently referred to as open cables, so that's what I'm calling them in pretzel logic. And they can be of two kinds. Basic open cables are just like hand knitted cables, but we accomplish them on the machine. Embossed open cables are very simple on the knitting machine and much more involved in hand knitting, and I don't know of anybody who ever hand knits them. Both of the samples you see were knitted on the machine. The blue aqua colored one on the left is a basic cable. The mocha colored one on the right is an embossed cable. I made both of these on the Brother 260 and I would say the mocha embossed sample took me roughly half the time of the aqua sample. Both kinds of cable may be knitted using the same charts. So let's take a closer look at the charts and learn to understand them now. This is one of the simplest charts in the book. There are several principles to keep in mind when looking at the chart. It represents all throughout the book only the back bed or main bed needles. At all times while knitting these open cables, there will be front bed or river bed stitches in work. And I will make it abundantly clear how to set those up in the movies that go into the difference between basic and embossed cables. But for now, here's what you need to know. I refer to these as the cable ropes. They seem to be twisting around each other as ropes on the pearl background. These are the stitches indicated by the chart and they will always be on the back or main bed. The reason I keep using two terms is that on Japanese combinations the back bed is always called the main bed. It's the one you bought first and you may have added a river later. On a European double bed machine you probably bought both of them together and they more frequently use the term front and back bed. Any two bed setup, as long as there are needles all the way across both beds, may be used for embossed or basic open cables. So let's look at this chart row by row and imagine you're knitting it. Bottom row. There are two stitches in the center of the design that should be in work on the main or back bed. That is how the cables for these two little dresses start and both of them started with tubular hems. So here I finished the hem and I'm transferring all the stitches to the front or river bed, which is a necessary step because the pearl background will be knitted on the front bed. Most of the time I then call for a couple of plain rows on the front bed only and then these two stitches need to be placed into work. They'll make ropes on the back or main bed. If knitting an embossed cable, we will lift pearl bumps from the front bed knitting onto the needles to fill them. It's easier to do this with a tool that has a single bent tine than it is to do it with the normal transfer tool. What I'm using here is actually made for a loom knitting hook, and I've polished and sharpened it a little bit, and it works great for mid-gauge and bulky. The orange pass-up tool was like this originally, but they're hard to find. If you need a standard gauge or pass-up superba one, then they're standard too, really. Polish one like this down 
And here I'm showing you that because we're making an embossed cable, those needles are racked so they pass one another. If making a basic cable, the stitches that are going to make the cables, these here, are transferred straight across the beds. And the beds are racked so that the needles would oppose perfectly if they all came out. So now we are set up and ready to knit it. We knit rows one and two with the needles in the position we just established. After setting up the stitches, all the action takes place every two rows. So we knit two rows and then the yellow in those boxes means that those two center stitches should be cabled. Lift the stitches on two single prong tools, cross the stitches, replace them on the opposite needles from whence they began and that gives us this. For this simple design, it does not matter whether you go left over right or right over left, but do the same thing throughout the project. The action takes place every two rows, so now knit two rows. We've knitted row four. The knit stitches are still in their same position, but the little arrows in these boxes are telling us it's time to move them outward one needle space. In most open cables, the stitches do diverge and then converge again, then trade places by cabling. This is what's referred to as a cross. Stitches are crossing the background of purl stitches, but no main bed or back bed stitches crossed with each other, so they were not cabled. The entire project is called a cable, but that's the distinction. Cabling is when stitches on the same bed trade places. Crossing is when stitches on the two beds trade places. In this chart, after knitting rows five and six, we do the same exact thing. We knit rows five and six plain, then we move the stitches apart. And you just saw me start that. Now the chart is telling us to knit rows seven and eight and begin moving the stitches towards one another. There are arrows in these boxes, just as there were on row six, but they've changed direction. So it's time to bring the stitches back towards one another. We knit rows nine and 10. Then the little arrows tell us to move the stitches together one more time. Doing so brings them back to the center and we can start the chart again on the next couple of rows. We will repeat what we just did over and over, usually for the length of the project. Knit two rows, then cable two. Knit two rows, then move the stitches apart. Knit two rows, move the stitches apart again. Knit two rows, move the stitches together. Knit the last two rows, move the stitches together. They'll land here. And we can begin again. One important thing to remember is every time that one moves stitches, it is essential to get the needles that were in work and are no longer needed out of work all the way. I failed to do that here, and I got an unwanted stitch starting to pick up and knit. In upcoming videos, we will talk in great detail about the difference between basic and embossed cables. Learn to understand some of the more complex charts and knit a little project together. See you there. In case this pair of books interests you, there is a link to my sales page, actually two links, one to my website, one to Ravelry in the program notes, and also a link to the rest of the cable playlist. That playlist is growing all the time, so it's something you may wanna check on frequently.